mai kākou. O Joshua Nonga, kou inoa. O Kali Ipalama, aina hanau. O haula mai au. I want to mahalo all of you guys for coming here. I'm especially grateful um, to stand in solidarity here personally and both professionally um, with our allies that we stand side by side here today. I come as a father, I come as a son, I come as a son of this Aina. I grew up right here in the shadow, downtown Honolulu, right in Kalihi. I grew up looking at Pearl Harbor. I grew up, I grew up looking at the ships coming to Honolulu Harbor. I grew up looking at the military installations in Kaneohe Bay. I grew up right around the corner of the military army installation at Fort Shafter, I ride in the shadow also of what they call Joint Base Hickam Air Force Base. There is without a doubt, there is, there is, there is, it's undisputable that the military has a dominating and bullying presence here in Hawaii. It's without a doubt that there was an illegal overthrow and oppression of the native people of this islands, Kanaka Maoli. It's undisputed, it is, it is without a doubt that the institution, white patriarchal institution, that is the United States government, has held the indigenous people of this islands under oppression without self-determination, like our friend Hialani has said. Now that is without doubt, but what has gone on and what has come with this colonization and this bullying of Americanization that is the United States military, there has come this acceptance or this normalization that the military is good for us, that has been good to us, that has treated us fairly. And that is, that I could be farthest, furthest from the truth. The men and women who have served the United States military they have served them proudly. Many of us have Ohana that have served in the United States military. I come from Farrington High School, where it's one of the biggest um, uh, United States military recruiting stations here in the islands. There's a song that goes on right now that they take away our roots and all they give us is soldier boots. Yeah, think about that. There's a reason why the United States military comes into uh, the poor, neighborhoods of color in the community and continue to exploit the people resources of that community in order to extract them into the United States military and further their imperialistic capitalistic that's what they're there for and so they have oppressed us in that way not only the indigenous people but also the colonial settler that has come here looking for an opportunity because whether you like it or not the United States military has been a bully they have been nothing short of a bully. They have been an abusive partner in our relationship. They're the world's biggest environmental polluter. In this space where we're having the International World Conservation Congress, we're in this space where the United States military has dominated the, the, the Hawaiian Islands. There's a, a repression, a continued repression of the voice that is here today those small in numbers right now, I mahalo everybody here that is raising this awareness and those that are gonna join us there in protesting. Now in saying that, I just wanted to say that those things that I have said are of my personal opinion because I am also the conservation program coordinator of the Sierra Club of Hawaii. Now the Sierra Club of Hawaii, there's a long history in that that maybe doesn't need to be addressed in this context, but needs to be stated. That the Sierra Club hope, that the Sierra Club started the environmental movement so long time ago, that it wasn't very friendly to poor people of color, that it wasn't very friendly to those that they deemed unworthy to fight in the cause. But in changes, this is happening. At both at national and what they call in this organization that I work for, and both locally, 
to one of our, our directors, Marty Townsend, who understands that in an ally, in alliance, in coalition, you may not agree on every single issue, but their fundamental values that as a coalition, as our alliances, we will agree on and we can agree on and we stand with. And so in this in this matter, I come to you. In speaking of this context, I felt I needed to share that. That the Sierra Club of Hawaii has come out to demand that the United States Navy decommission their jet fuel tanks that sit at Red Hill. Yeah. Okafuka Key, that is also known here. These 20 tanks, each tank has 12 and a half million gallons of jet fuel. It was built in 1943. They're over 70 years old and they're deteriorating. Not at the time they may have or may have not known that they built these tanks over the biggest water aquifer that this island has. Serves 600,000 people from Halava to Hawaii Kai. That's residents, visitors alike, including, including those in Waikiki. Now we're telling them right now, because the most recent leak that has happened, 27,000 gallons of jet fuel has leaked. Now we don't know where that jet fuel is. We currently do know that it's not in our drinking water as of this moment, but there is a threat. Because just recently, the Department of Health has stated that up to 600,000 gallons of jet fuel has leaked into the environment over the past 60 years. The Board of Water Supply has also corroborated that report. Now, the question to you and to us remains, are we gonna let the United States Navy continue to do that? Hell no. Are we gonna let them to put our water at risk? No. Are we gonna let them to continue this domination of, of and repression of our people and contamination of our environmental, of our water. Now, as we stand in solidarity also with our friends in Standing Rock who are fighting for a similar, similar issue to prevent their, the, the Kavai Ola or the water of life. There they call it the Missouri River that feeds them. Here, it is a water aquifer that feeds us. So we stand in solidarity and we stand for our water as well. I have a petition here that we have gathered that we're gonna send the Department of Health, the Navy, as well as the EPA to tell them to find the contaminants, to clean it up, and do whatever you gotta do, decommission those tanks, but don't put our water aquifer at risk. So again, a mahalo each and every one of you as we make our way to this IUCN. And let, let, let our voices be heard. Mahalo, everyone. Aloha. Woo!